door. Never mind that. There's a list of Bingley right from the north. I've seen my first one. Yeah, apparently. the most beautiful creature I have ever beheld. But her sister Elizabeth is very agreeable. Perfectly tolerable, I dare say. But not handsome enough to tempt me. You'd better return to your partner and enjoy her smiles. You're wasting your time with me. Dead. So what do you recommend to encourage affection? Dancing. Even if one's partner is barely tolerable. Hence, I'm conveniently rich. You know perfectly well I do not believe Mary should be driven by a daughter. Oh, there, dear. Oh, poor thing. It is a shame she's not more handsome. There's a sweat and a headache. There is nothing much wrong with me. This is ridiculous. Yeah. You must have a cane, her. I was quite in raptures at her beautiful little design for a table. Perhaps. And, of course, she must improve her mind by extensive reading. I'm no longer surprised at your knowing only six accomplished women. I rather want an out your knowing any. Are you so severe on your own sex? I never saw such a woman. She would certainly be a fearsome thing to behold. <laughs> it's that I find it hard to forgive the follies and vices of others or their offences against me. My good opinion, once lost, is lost forever. There must have been a misunderstanding. Oh, Jane, do you never think ill of anybody? Well, how could Mr. Darcy do such a thing? I'll discover this. I've never met a more pleasant gentleman in all my years. Did you see how he don't? Dear Jane, always doing what's best for her family. Almost as soon as I entered the house, I singled you out as the companion of my future life. <clears throat> but before I am run away with my feelings, perhaps I may state my reasons for marrying. Firstly, that it is the violence of my affection. Mr. Collins! And that no reproach on the subject of fortune will cross my lips once we're married. You are too hasty, sir. You forget that I have given no answer. I must add that Lady Catherine will thoroughly approve when I speak to her of your modesty, economy, and other amiable qualities. Sir, I am honoured by your proposal, but I regret that I must decline it. I know ladies don't seek to seem too easy. Mr Collins, I am perfectly serious. You could not make me happy, and I'm convinced I'm the last woman in the world who could make you happy. Elegant female. Sir. I am not the sort of female to torment a respectable man. Please understand me, I cannot accept you. <laughs> that strong, foolish child. Your mother insists on you marrying Mr. Collins. Yes, I shall never see her again. Lizzie, from this day onward, 
You must be a stranger to one of your parents. Who will maintain you when your father's dead? Your mother will never see you again if you do not marry Mr. Collins. And I will never see you again if you do. Mr. Bennett. Thank you, Papa. Mr. Darcy. My dear Lizzie, I've come here to tell you the news. Mr. Collins and I are engaged. Engaged? Yes. Not all of us can afford to be romantic. I've been offered a comfortable home and protection. There's a lot to be thankful for. Charlotte. I'm 27 years old. I've no money and no prospects. I'm already a burden to my parents. <laughs> Dear Charlotte, thank you for your letter. Oh, it's Lady Catherine. Come and see Lizzie. Amazing, a loan costs upwards of £20,000. Come along. I did live for so young a person. How does Georgiana get along, Darcy? I saw Mr. Darcy when I was at Rosings. Why did you not tell me? Did he mention Mr. Bingley? No. May I see you back to the... Miss Bennet. You may ask a question which I may choose not to answer. This is not to be borne. Has my nephew made you an offer of marriage? Your